Hey guys, uh, Spink here. Um, this is what episode seven, I believe, of my what is now I'm calling a Let's Learn Aegean Civil War II. I was originally thinking this was going to be a standard Let's Play, but it's obviously not. Um, so I'm just I'm not really going to change what I'm doing. I'm just still going to actually play through the game, but I'm going to do a lot of explaining um, as I go, what I'm doing, how things work, how I understand them to work. I'm certainly no no expert on this game. Um, back to where we were left off here after the last episode. I spent the previous episode explaining rather in rather too much detail, I think, what happened during the turn. But what we're going to do is gonna try to try to focus this a little more. Um, let's take a look at this this army, McDowell's army, that just that, that, that took such a huge hit in that in that defeat. And the thing that I want to focus on in uh, right now is is cohesion, the cohesion loss, and what that means. If you look at the bars on the uh, on the army here, uh, the red bar is is actual strength, combat, actual manpower is really what that is. How many, um, you know, your your well, man, yeah, manpower. Second one is the cohesion, and this green bar at the edge that's your supply. So supply, we're doing good, but this cohesion bar it's sitting down at fifty percent, and and that is the average for the whole unit. So if we look through here, we've got guys that are low in cohesion. We've got some that are completely gone. We've got some that look like they're per they're completely okay. And I think we got a lot fewer infantry brigades than we had when we came down here. That's that's unsettling. We did take, I believe, s lose 7,300 troops as as prisoners, I believe we did. So anyway, this is what I wanted to, sh to talk about today. Um, if we take a look at a guy that's that's actually taken damage, so we'll look at this uh, infantry brigade here. You can see his uh, he has two of his regiments over here that are shaded in red, and this means that they have taken hits. So this first one here, he he has a maximum of 20 hits and he has eight left. So this is a unit that's really taken, really taken a pounding. His combat power, as you see, is non-existent. His cohesion is zero. This is a unit that is providing absolutely no benefit to us, uh, combat power-wise. So the only thing that actually is, if you see he does have a 26, it's going to be his artillery unit. And the artillery unit's in good shape. It's lost a little bit of cohesion. And you'll, you will find that, um, is your artillery units will generally you know, because they're not in the front line, so they're they're not taking the the damage that this is. But that his his uh, power here is almost entirely that uh, that um, artillery unit. But cohesion, right now, this cohesion, his combat power is non-existent. His morale is very low. He's taken quite a bit of hits. You can see he's lost over half his men. How do we get these um, hits back? Well, we, we rest our units. Basically, it's common sense. You put them in a secure area, in a passive posture. I don't believe a passive posture is required for replacements. It is for cohesion hits, or not required. But we get these guys back in a depot, in a safe place, and we're going to be able to, to recover this these, uh, these, these hits here. But anyway, let's look at this first brigade here. This unit has had two hits off of him, just a, you know, what, he's lost 60 men. His combat power is non-existent as well, and he's very low. And again, that's that cohesion. That's what that cohesion loss is doing to you. So even though this guy did not uh, take nearly the damage that other unit had, he is also completely useless to us as a combat unit at the moment. If these units were to get into another fight right now, we would lose again another big chunk of them as prisoners. These these units are completely spent. This is a force that cannot really defend itself anymore. If we look at the unit that we fought, you can see they're not doing too much better than we are. In fact, it looks like uh, their cohesion is even worse, and their and their strength is even worse. So, so um, we're not really in danger from this unit, but we do have Johnston up here with his completely fresh army of however many, the army of the Shenandoah, I don't know how how large that is. I'm, I believe it's at least, what have we got? 
regular, regular, regular. I believe that refers to um, infantry brigades. So we can assume three brigades of infantry, three artillery units, and some supply. Should these should these come down and attack us here while we're in such a dire strait? That's not going to be good. Um, Beauregard disappeared. We didn't see what happened to him. He's gone. He took before our battle. You know, we never saw him in the battle. So he took some portion of of that force. And we don't know where he went. So he could have a force that can that can now hit us, kind of counterpunch in that um, this unit. You know, a unit that's good, that's got good cohesion, good power, can hit us in this in this situation, and, and we could be hurt and we could take some serious damage. So we've got to get these guys out of here, and we've got to recover this cohesion. And how you recover your cohesion? Again, it's, it's pretty much common sense. You get them in a safe area, we'll put them in a passive posture. Basically, you take these guys out of combat posture, combat for, um, combat posture as much as possible. Put them inside, inside a, a structure rather than deployed out in the field. And when, as you do those things, that will be your fastest recovery rate of your cohesion. So we're going to get these guys back. Um, to Washington. Maybe we'll maybe we'll stop in Alexandria. Obviously, we're going to have to go through Alexandria, so we'll see um, next turn if we want to pull them farther back. But we want to keep these guys from getting into a fight. So what we're going to do? Uh, this is the postures. We talked about those before. This little piece here, this bar. These are called the rules of engagement. I've done a little bit more reading in the manual, so I can explain things a little more appropriately. And we're going to take this all the way down to this retreat if engaged. So we want to be able to, if, if we get attacked by somebody, we want to spend as few rounds of combat as possible before we get out. Because we're, we're just not in a shape to defend ourselves, and we'll just lose those units. So we're going to bring those to there. Twelve days, and then we'll see you next turn. He may not um, get there, because there may be a, a delay before he starts moving, but we got a little wiggle room. The three days, we might be able to make it, so we'll try that. Um, we're going to start building up our force in Washington and rebuilding this army. We're going to do everything we can to maximize our ability to, uh, to, to get this army in good shape. If you recall from last turn or a couple turns ago, we bought this HQ support, and he's going to become available in I don't know how many turns. I don't think it says... Anyway, we have this uh, this medical service um, ability on this unit that is going to increase our cohesion recovery rate by 15%. So once this unit is, is fully built, we're going to be able to use that to help get our, our, our unit recovered. And I think I'm going to bring McClellan in, not just because, you know, we're in kind of an oh shit period here. You know, we just we just had our, our army smacked you know our, our expectations of this of how this uh, war is gonna go has just taken a massive a massive shock we you know this is not gonna be a one battle we all shake hands and resolve the war so now something we're gonna knuckle down that this is a long war well I'm gonna bring McClellan over because if we recall McClellan has these two abilities, this training officer and this uh, army administrator with the 15% recovery rate, and we're going to get we're going to get this army rebuilt. So we're going to bring him across for that. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take Hurlbut's force. I think I'll just leave these all here. And this will be the, the, the build up of our, of our army. That's, in fact, I'll just move those. We're going to take them to Louisville down here. And I'm going to move those by railroad. If you see there, our railroad went down. You see our river, our river points are already in red. We're starting off with this in red. If you look at our uh, at the pop-up that is telling us here, it says our railroad capacity. We have enough for 80 excess points usable for troop transportation, and our supply, our our uh, river supply, is limited. So we're already under however much. Um, we don't have enough river. Um, transport for the amount of rivers of supply we need to be moving by rivers. So we're going to need to get that brought up too. Anyway, let's get back to here. We're taking um, Hurlbut, his horse, down to Louisville. This this uh, north uh, north 
eastern kind of this little bulge of uh, of Kentucky opened up to us as part of the uh, Camp Robinson event is, is where that happens Camp Dick Robinson so um, we're gonna garrison these two towns these are two objective cities and I believe Louisville is a well they're both strategic towns I believe Louisville is a objective town as well this is one that that we're going to have some uh, uh, national morale attachment to so we're going to get, uh, we do have uh, Nelson building a force here. They're already here. They're just locked for a few turns. Camp Dick Robinson. And we have Hurlbut coming down, and he's going to garrison Louisville, and we're going to start building up a force here. McClellan. No, I'm here's something else we can do. I, I never remember to use it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if we can get it to work here. We have the ability with um, with generals, and I think other other units as well, to do what's called a redeployment move and you can redeploy to anywhere where there is a rail connection to I believe is the rule so let's see if we can make that work I'm gonna click on that and now it says click the redeployment region let's see if I can redeploy him to Washington there we go yeah so he's now going to re redeploy to Prince George Maryland so okay what do we got next up here um, see if I can pick up the pace a little over over previous things. Now we took um, Bu um, Butterfield's force. This actually was Patterson's force at the time into into Harper's Ferry, and you can see because we were not activated, it dropped him from our offensive posture into our into a defensive posture. I'm going to stick him back on the offensive posture on the off chance that it, that'll work for me. Um, we're not going to assault these fortifications well maybe we ought to try it unless we pull this up to here uh, my concern is that Johnston is going to come up here and, and attack us and I don't want to be in an assault posture when he does it because that means I'm going to not be defending I'm going to be attacking him and I will maybe not take advantage of the defensive we do have a little bit of uh, of entrenchment we have a, a one entrenchment value and we do have some hills here so maybe I'm gonna leave him on defensive and just just see because we can we don't need to uh, capture Harper's Ferry imminently so we'll do that um, what I am gonna do we do have this uh, Pennsylvania Brigade a nice nice brigade here of uh, two infantry and an artillery battery I'm gonna move him into Harper's Ferry as well. In fact, I'm actually going to drop him onto Butterfield's force, so he's actually going to enter that stack. Now, if this, if we had put, if we had given Butterfield some, uh, we use a railroad. If we had given Butterfield some movement orders, then this unit would follow him around. And if we had, we had, if we had put that, say, like we would do here, on an enemy unit, that means he's going to try to track this unit and, and follow him wherever. He and that's useful sometimes when you have these cavalry raids and stuff that the AI likes to do. Okay, so we've got that. There's not really much else we can do. I'm going to I'm going to keep uh, stone here in Leesburg just to kind of help plug this gap. We don't want we don't want to give the AI any ideas. Um, these units with the red stripe, obviously these are fixed units. We can't move those and if you hover over the little lock, it will tell you how long they are locked for. Um Let's see, what else do we have? We have our force in, in Morgantown here. We, we do have um, the Clarksburg force, the, the Floyd force has gone. So I'm going to move both of these. Well, maybe not. I'm going to move at least this unit into Clarksburg. And I'm going to take, oh, this is where that, uh, that other cavalry unit that we saw the message for popped up. So I'm going to include him in that stack. And these other guys are fixed for three turns, and these are just permanently. So I'm going to take this force, take it down here. We may be able to do rail movement on that. No, we're not. We're not able to. And that's because of the military control. The Confederacy, as you see, has 89% military control of that, so that would block rail movement. Um, there is no garrison in... Uh, whoops, what did I do? Moved him too far. I was just trying to scoot him out of the way. There is... Uh, how did he get over here? You're supposed to be there. 
All right, boom, right there. Um, there's no um, there's no Confederate garrison here, so as soon as we come in there, we'll take um, we'll take Clarksburg, and uh, we'll work to to get that military control of uh, of this region down to where we can use the railroad. And one of the things that, that, that helps with gaining military control is an offensive posture, so we'll put that on there. Uh, Blanker here, with just some, just a couple units of infantry. I believe they're conscripts, aren't they? We have one conscript infantry, one regular infantry, and a little artillery battery. We don't have a, we don't have a command penalty on this unit. It's small enough to only require two command and we do provide two command. Now if you recall, the Brigadier General is four, but we're independent, so we're halved. Let's take a look at our... This is the military control tab. The military control of uh, the Confederacy still has this, so I think I'm just going to keep him in this in this unit, and we're going we're gonna to basically do a policing function. E these units do have a police value but we're going to secure this region, get, get our military control in there to where we can have this, um, this rail line as ours. So we're going to do that, and I, I am going to put him on an offensive posture, both because if this guy comes in here I want to attack him, and also because I believe that speeds up the conversion of military control. So we're going to do that here. Um, as we go off here, we're, this is I believe we've already done what we're going to do here talked about that. Um, we did get this unit here. We're ready to go with that. We're just going to start building up. We're not going to go to uh, do too many offensive operations until we've built up our forces and got our uh, supply situation worked out. Um, over here, Fremont has come in. We're going to put him in this St. Louis department. Now we do have one army command available and Fremont is the most senior of our army, so I'm going to actually put him in charge of an army right here. If nothing else, that lets us put somebody else in charge of another army when we're able to, to build another army. So we're going to primarily use him to be the gathering point for troops. Um, these Western Volunteers, three turns. I'm just going to go ahead and stick those in this Western Command. If you put a non-moving force you know, a force that can't move into your stack. Obviously, the whole stack now can't move. So, anyway, the Lion Force. Now, if we look at Nathaniel Lion, he's a pretty good guy. Six two three two. Um, good dude here. He's got. Let's look at his his abilities. Charismatic twenty five percent increase to recovery, fatigue recovery. That's awesome. That's going to be our cohesion. He is an occupier. He will not hesitate to proclaim martial law. I assume what that means is he's going to uh, increase um, increase uh, military control and loyalty faster, I'm guessing. He is a hothead. He won't be able to order a retreat during the first two hours of battle. Cool. So what we're going to do with him, going to keep in mind, he's only providing two... Um, command. He requires 10 for this force, so we are operating at this 35% penalty, and I believe that also that this uh, this penalty also affects um, movement rate. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's probably, you can probably be pretty, pretty um, safe bet just assuming this is going to hurt you across the board. But what we're going to be able to do when we make this a division, we'll be able to drop that, that 10 down to a 4. Okay, so what I would like to do um, with with uh, Lion here is take him down to Rolla. Forty days—that's a bit. That's a bit tough. Oh, we're in mud. Let me pop him back. Let's take a look at the uh, weather map here. This is the eight overlay here. The weather, if you see that one, I'm going to use the eight key. And here we go. Look at this. Um, the green is clear, and the mud here. And what that's going to do is is really slow down movement. Mud is really going to slow down movement, as you saw that uh, trying to move him in there. That was uh, that was was going to take 40 days. We've got a mud out through here. Let's look off onto the Eastern Theater. Nothing. Still nice and clear over there. 
um, mud through Kentucky. Um, mud in here in the middle of, Miss, of Missouri and up here in, uh, in Iowa. Okay, so that's something to think about when we're, when we're doing our operations. Um, we, we can expect our, um, our movement to be much slower. We can expect that our cohesion hits that we take while moving through that will be much worse. And, you, and we certainly don't want to, uh, to uh, arrive in a, in a combat situation with our, with our cohesion down real low. But let's see what the military control here. 100% to the United States, 100% to the Confederacy. So we can railroad into here, and that will certainly save us a lot of time and cohesion. I wonder if we can railroad, what if we tried to railroad all the way here? What would that do? We hit railroad. So we railroad into here in one day, and then we would be slogging through the mud for an additional 21 days here. Um, I think I'm going to pull that off. I will take the railroading into here, and we'll just sit here in uh, in Union, Missouri, and be prepared to march on Rolla when the weather improves. Or possibly we'll just we'll just do it. Depends. Um, if uh, if price comes down here. Uh, he's likely going to be more powerful than we are. Now, we're only seeing uh, two militia units and two artillery units with him, but we don't really have a real good... Um, we don't really have a real good uh, detection rating in this area. That's something we'll need to talk about at some time, too, the hide rating and detection rating. Yeah, if you just look at this, it's pretty self-explanatory. It, it's based on your military control, it's based on the loyalty of the region, and it's based on the, the uh, presence of your own units. So here we have a detection value of 4, as we can see at the bottom of this tooltip, and we do have 100% um, military control here. Um, but here we only have a detection value of 1, so our ability to tell what's going on with this force is much reduced because our re detection value is so low. Over here we have a 4, see, so this gives us more information about this unit. We can see quite a bit of information about this, this unit. We can tell the two, the two brigades that it belongs here and their force and the total power level. We, we got a really good handle on that, and that's because, in part, probably because we have this unit sitting right next door, but also because, yeah, that's probably it, because we, they have the military control of 100% here, so that's probably that's probably it. We don't have military forces next to these, so our ability to tell what's actually here is much reduced. So that's another reason why um, moving Lion just to here is a good idea, so that we'll be able to get a, a good handle on, on what's in here. And maybe next maybe next turn it won't be mud and we'll be able to, to, to get through there a little better. Um, I think I am going to... Are we in mud up here? Yeah, we're mud. What would this be? Ten days. Ten days to get from here to here. This is also um, hills. This terrain down here is hills. If we can pull up this um, simplistic terrain overlay, you can see that. Um, whereas here it's clear. So even though it's mud, our, our, our ability to get through here is, is, is not as, as harmed. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to take Jefferson. So I'm going to put this guy on a, on his um, offensive posture and move him down there. What else we got out here? We do have our um, our cavalry here. As you can see, we're adjacent to this to this uh, region, which gives us a pretty good detection value on here. We do see we have three brigades, four brigades sitting here. Now. Are these new units that are coming up from Springfield, or is this part is this part of the force that that Price had? I don't, I didn't pay enough attention to what units he had. This may be part of Price's force that he split up and is sending them back by another route. I don't know. Um, let's see. We're not really pulling up the. Uh, military control of this very easily so I'm gonna bring him back I don't want this force to, to be heading up towards Lexington while while this force is away so I am gonna pull this 
Oops, that's a bit much. What if we did it this way? Eight days. Oh, because the mud stops. That's clear weather over there. That's why he chose to go that direction. But we could maybe take a little bit of that. That's 17 days. No, too much. Let's pull him to there in seven days. That's good. Uh, we're sitting. We're sitting good on on um, on uh, supply. But the supply is the first thing that happens dur during the turn. And we started the last turn in supply, so we were able to to re to uh, replenish before we moved. But now we're not going to be able to. So we're going to use our four supply this turn, and then we're not going to replenish. So at the at the beginning of next turn, we'll see this guy will now be down to four supply as his current stock. All right, what do we got next? Let's go through the E-keys here and see if we've got anything to do. Lou Wallace, I think he's just going to hang here. This Caro force, again, he's just going to some militia. Um, we do have this Southern Oregon force that I was wondering what to do with. Um, now, if you look at this, the, uh, the, con the union of sentiment in these, in these uh, regions is not great, especially as we get down to, uh, down in Nevada and down in, in California. So then California is even higher. So I wonder if some of these uh, some of these cards down here, these decisions, that lets them put partisans and and uh, little p partisan type forces. I wonder if that's something we need to be careful of in on the West Coast here. Against the AI, I'm not so worried about it. If it was a player, you know, we all do like to do those devious things. So I wonder if leaving Nevada ungarrisoned was a, was a bad idea. If you see, we do have a, a gold mine here. So so we might want to think about throwing a garrison into Nevada while we're at it. Uh, that, that also reminds me, we did get a uh, message last turn that said a militia unit in Salt Lake City had been uh, trained. And I came over here looking at this unit, not able to figure it out. Well, it's, it's in the garrison here, you know, so like the... You see, they've gained, start off with all this experience, I don't even know why. It looks like he's got a gold star on his experience. No idea what that all means, what that's really telling us. Anyway, let's let's get these units. Um, we have uh, McLernand, I'm going to move him down. We're just going to basically start, start concentrating the forces that we do have. I'm going to move him here by railroad. Humphreys has a force here in New York City. I believe there's also this Union Detachment, a supply unit. So I'm going to add that in there. And we're going to move these down to, to New York City, or uh, excuse me, Washington, just to kind of consolidate all our forces and then figure out what we're going to do. This is our, our Denver force. We're just going to leave them there. Schertz's Cavalry is where we wanted them. Now that we do have Harper's Ferry, Maybe we want to move these over here. Kind of start securing our railroad over here. So we'll put him there. Uh, Butterfield's force. I think we're just going to leave him there and see what Johnston does. Um, we have a brigade in, in Baltimore. That's the only one that can move. I'm going to move, I'm going to just, again, any, any loose forces, I'm just going to railroad them down to, uh, okay, we've set him to move. I'm, we're just going to railroad them to Washington so that we can uh, dis dispense them. Blinkers just hanging out here. Uh, Keys, he's just ready here. I'm going to use him as the, um, as the general to start combining all these forces in. Mansfield, we were going to combine him with with that army just to get them through. We now have this uh, this Michigan Brigade has uh, has the, the got his reinforcement so we can think about moving him somewhere. We can give him to Blinker. That would give Blinker two brigades. But again I don't know if I don't know if I want to put too much force in this uh, region. But what the heck, let's just do it. Let's not uh, not spend too much time thinking this turn we've been spending a lot of time thinking and jabbering. Illinois Brigade, this is our, this is our, um, 
unit we put down here to be a, a basically a garrison in this area. So I'm going to hit S and put him on the permanent sentry status. If you if you hover over this uh, little circle right here, it'll tell you what they are. And what this is going to do is going to make it so this guy does not show up when we're hitting our E and our R keys because we don't need we know what he's doing. We don't care anymore. And again, now I'm going to start hitting that space bar to filter out the guys. Portland Forest. Until I can think of what to do with them, I'm just going to leave them there. Again, with this force. Again, with that force. We've we've moved you. We've everybody's been decided. Keys. We've decided. So everybody has been decided what they're going to do. We're going to go through the um, naval units. Again, we're sitting down here, sitting pretty good. We've got one, two, three, four, plenty of units here now. So I'm going to take the transports. And I'm going to put them actually in Fort Monroe. And then I'm going to take this Chesapeake Squadron and I'm going to stick that in the James River and see what we do for uh, um, blockading. And blockading again, that's obviously something we're going to have to talk about too. This gunboat squadron, just sitting there, just what we wanted to do. He's out of ammo though. He's out of ammo. We're going to have to pull him back. Let's pull him into Carroll so that he can recover, get get uh, get his uh, ammo resupplied. Foot, his ammo is not good, but let's let's do the same with him. Let's get him back into Carroll. The Atlantic Squadron. That's our blockade. We've talked about these. We're just gonna we're just gonna leave them there. Here's the Brooklyn has shown up with the with these squadrons so now we have our two units sitting down there and they're just gonna they're just gonna hang out here there's our blockade squadron down there <laughs> Lake Erie squadron Farragut do we have anything new showed up I think we did oh he's now active so we're gonna have to think of what to do with him uh, we have another Atlantic squadron this is another blockade squadron so I'm just gonna take the time I know I haven't explained how that works yet but I'm still just gonna take him Take him down to join this blockade. We need to talk about the blockade squadrons. Okay. That's it, and we're over time. So I'm going to stop this now. Uh, we still have... Uh, we still have uh, production to do. But we're going to need to, to build a lot or a lot of infantry. We're going we're gonna to add to our river pools and probably our rail pools. We're going to do something to get more to more recruits in there because we 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 really need to bring up our manpower now. But I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call this episode to a close right now. Alright, thanks.